Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the concept of deferred and non-recognized gains and losses. To say it in another way, we're going to have to differentiate between what is recognized and what's realized. Simply put, we're going to have realized gain and part of that realized gain will be recognized. So we need to understand what is realized and what's recognized. Well, let's do a quick review of what we already learned. We learned that if we take the amount realized, what is the amount realized? It's called the consideration received. So when we sell an asset, when we sell a piece of property, we're going to be receiving something. And we talked about, we have one whole session about amount realized. For simplicity, I'm just going to say we only received cash just to kind of get started here. We received $100,000 cash for something that we sold. Then we take the amount realized. Then we deduct from that the adjusted basis of the property. Again, we had a session computing the adjusted basis of the property. Let's assume the adjusted basis is 70,000. What we have under those circumstances, we received 100,000, the, the adjusted basis is 70. We have a realized gain of 30,000. That's actually what happened. The gain is realized. That's what actually happened. We sold something for 100,000 with an adjusted basis of 70. Now, that 30,000 may not be taxable. Why? Well, for many reasons. We're gonna see why. That's what the whole lecture is about. The gain, the whole gain or some of the gain might be deferred. What does deferred? Deferred means push it down into the future. Push it down to the future. It means like kick the can down. Don't recognize the gain now. We're going to recognize it later. Or it might be the gain not taxable by law. For some reason, non-taxable. So after we deduct the deferred and non-taxable, and let's assume for the sake of this example, 10,000 is deferred. What's left is recognized. Recognized is the amount that is taxable. Taxable means that's the amount that's going to go on the tax return and increase our taxable income. So of the 30,000, simply put, what we did, we have a 30,000 of realized. 10,000 of it is deferred. Deferred means we're going to push it down to the push it down the road. And how do we do that? We'll see later on what does that mean. How do we execute this 10,000 and pushing it down the road? And the 20,000 is actually, we can say, taxable. Taxable now. So this is the deferred. You can look at it in another way. It's taxable later. And you will see how it's taxable later. Now, same concept will be with the loss. So let's assume we sold something for 100,000 and the adjusted basis was 130. Now we have a realized loss of 30,000. Same concept. That loss could be deferred for later, and sometimes it may not be allowed altogether by law. And whatever is left, let's assume 10,000 is deferred, what's left is recognized. It means this 20,000 of losses will be deductible because it's recognized. That's the amount that, that we are going to deduct on the income tax return. It's deductible. So this is the concept, realize versus recognize. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles, my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Now we're going to look at a list of transactions that create those deferred gains and deferred losses. The deferral and non-taxable gain generally stem from the following transaction. Qualified like-kind exchanges, and we're going to have a one whole session about this, 1031 exchanges. Involuntary conversions. The sale of properties, principal residence. Divorce property settlement, installment sales. And believe me, we're going to have a session for involuntary conversion. Taxpayer principles of residence sale. Divorce, divorce property settlement will be very short and installment sales. At the same, also buying the treasury capital, uh, treasury capital and stock transaction as well. 
Also, in contrast to deferred and disallowed losses generally stem from related party transactions, which is where you cannot either have to defer or not take the loss, the disposition of personal use property, for example, by law, you cannot get the loss and wash sales transaction. So notice, every time I have a list, if you know anything about Farhat, I'm going to go over this list in detail, step by step, starting with qualified like-kind exchange. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, whether you, you are a CPA or an enrolled agent candidate, or a student, start to work MCQs, true false, that's going to help you understand the concept better. Good luck, study hard, and this concept is important, so make sure you, you know the difference between recognized gain, recognized loss, and realized gain and realized loss. Good luck, and study sa stay safe.